I still just felt nervous that what we did wasn't enough. Okay, with that, Jeff, would you please call a roll call vote? Antes de que el voto pudiera suceder, yo me sentía nerviosa, me sentía preocupada. The resolution, Ms. Gallatin, a no vote. I was very scared that I don't know where one of our supporters might have went against us. Ms. Garcia, I'm a yes. It was not a slam dunk. It was not a sure thing. Mr. Kaiser, yes, yes, vote. Yes, vote. We knew that we had to get at least one more person to vote for us because we only had three and you need four. Yes, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Just one year ago, our community came together to win a monumental victory that brought hundreds of millions of dollars to Los Angeles' highest needs schools. We want to share this story with you. We want to share the steps we took with you. Uh, we want to share the inspiration with you so that you can take this fight uh, not only throughout California, but really uh, throughout the country to really fight for equity in ways we've never done before. In 2012, uh, California voters passed Proposition 30, which increased tax revenue for the state of California, uh, and in particular, education. One year later, Governor Jerry Brown signed historic legislation known as the Local Control Funding Formula, or LCFF, which would direct this revenue to school districts with high-need students. LCFF provides an opportunity for those districts with the highest need students to get the resources that they need to truly address educational equity. The catch is that each district will have to decide how it's going to spend that money. So for example, in Los Angeles, uh, we were really concerned that the district was going to just sprinkle all those resources to every school. And we know that in LA, there are some schools that have higher needs than others. So our campaign was focused on ensuring that the schools with the highest needs were first in line. Most community-centered campaigns have some basic steps to follow. So I'd like to share some of those steps with you now so that you can organize your community and bring equity into your neighborhood. Number one, inform and organize your community. In organizing, we understand that those directly affected by the problem should be those that get organized to create solutions to those problems. Nosotros nos dimos a la tarea de informar a la gente, de salir a la calle, de buscar firmas. So what we did is we went to classes and explained to them why this money was important and how it would actually help us in our education. To not just make a difference for themselves, but for the generations that are after them. We would ask them like, what do you go through at home, in school, in our community that affects your education? And do you feel that it's right? All of those activities were about building and showing and demonstrating power to decision makers. That there was an organized force within these high need communities that were informed about the issue and had solutions and they weren't going to be heard. So our job is to make sure that the community gets organized, educated on the issue, because when we come together as a community, we're much stronger than when we act alone. Number two, collaborate with allies. Most campaigns become much more effective when you bring different organizations together. We began to think about and have really exciting conversations with Community Coalition and Inner City Struggle. Advancement Project came to the table with similar values in a similar lens. Additionally, there are many foundations that are willing to step up and support your work. It was important for us, A, to make sure that this extra amount of resources uh, went to actually the young people that needed it. And so we wanted to make sure to fund robustly youth and community organizing as part of that work. Number three, engage and influence decision makers. Uh, in every single campaign, there's someone who's in charge that has the power to give you what you want. Uh, and when it comes to the local control funding formula, that power lies in the board of education in your local community. One of the most important things that we did is we actually had uh, meetings with every single board member that would give us the time. I remember being inspired by young people willing to take their uh, lives in their hands and being leaders for themselves and their communities. You want to write letters to them, you want to hold community meetings, you want to collect petitions and engage them around the petitions. They need to know that there's an organized group of people that has solutions to advancing educational equity in their school district. 
Number four, engage the media. Every decision maker, every elected official always picks up the paper in the morning to see what's being written about. So to have your story on the paper is gonna have a huge impact on how decision makers operate in the future. This is why it's critical to create a communications plan that tells your frame or tells your side of the story. Number five, mobilize and turn out your community. When it's time for a vote, it's time for us to get our community out there and be public. These large mobilizations allow the community to tell their story, to have an impact, and to remind those that are making decisions that there's a community that's watching. Student voices were essential in this campaign. We needed to know as board members, the community wasn't walking away. They were gonna stand right there and watch us take our vote. Now these five steps aren't gonna guarantee you a victory, but they'll bring you much closer to a win. Esta campaña creó una unidad poderosa, enorme, que nosotros nos vimos ahí juntos, trabajando juntos, afroamericanos, latinos, unidos con esa fuerza que tenemos. For far too long, we've been talking about reforming school finance, we've been talking about the lack of resources, and here we have a game-changing opportunity to have an impact. So let's do our job to make sure that our high needs communities get the resources we deserve and follow that up to make sure that they get the highest quality of education that they deserve as well.